This is also during the time when you're writing the hardcore diaries. Uh, do you have the support <laughs> of WWE to write this book? Yeah, because it was their idea. Okay. How does it come to be? I actually went to Vince. You know, I'd had the... 1999 book that did really well, the 2001 uh, book, and I start getting an itch to write another wrestling book, and I wanted to call it Maniac, with the key on Mania, a WrestleMania, inside the mind of Vince McMahon, and I wanted to follow Vince, like be a fly in the wall for like the six weeks leading up to Mania, and I gave him that idea, and he just thought, he was Mick, why don't you write your own book? And I was like, but I have to, and he goes, I think people would be interested to hear what you have to say. So it was Vince dismissing my original idea, which I still think would have made a heck of a book, but I liked the idea of going behind the scenes and bringing people into the moment. And no one had written anything like that before. I got some of my inspiration from two sports books, one called 48 Minutes, which was literally a book about one seemingly meaningless NBA game between the Celtics and the Cavaliers written by, I think, Bob Ryan, uh, or Robert Ryan, same, uh, but he's a, <clears throat> a New England reporter. And the other one by uh, Buzz Bissinger called Three Nights in August, about a three-game series between the Cardinals and can't remember the team. And I love the way that they bring you in and through the minutia, like the everyday stuff, or yes. even, you know, the one game, it you get a better understanding by covering that short period of time than you would if you try to do a major arc. It somehow feels more epic. Yeah. 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 And so I just started writing and I, you know, I started when my hopes for that match at one night stand were way up here. Uh, I no longer just had Vince's ear that I used to be able to say, call up, say, I've got an idea. Can I come in and pitch it to you? And I'd be there the next day with either Vince and JR or Vince and John Laurinaitis. I want to ask you about that because yeah. I think you pitch in April of 2006 in Stanford and you write, I was summoned into the booking meeting and immediately seated next to Vince, who I surmised wanted to be the first to sample the nuggets of wisdom that were sure to spew <laughs> from my mouth. Seated around the table were Dusty Rhodes, Greg Gagne, uh, Michael Hayes, Ed Kosky, Stephanie McMahon, David Lagana, and Brian Gewertz. This is the murderer's row of writers. My goodness. Yeah. And I, so it's so now it's not just Vince, it's pitching it to the booking committee. Including Dusty Rhodes. Including Dusty. And I kind of set up this idea uh, for a heel turn following the success I'd had with uh, uh, the Edge match. Yeah. I can't, I honestly, April 6th would have been after Mania. Yes. So Edge and I had torn it down, and I, and now, in retrospect, if I was going to turn heel, so I'm going to turn heel one time after a long run as a babyface, I should have done it with a Batista or somebody like that. Right. But I had this vision for a story involving me and Edge combining forces against Tommy Dreamer and Terry Funk. Tommy at that time was being utilized very little, and Terry uh, hadn't been in the company for a while, a long time. And I laid it out and I said, this whole angle uh, is balanced on whether or not we can convince fans that Terry Funk is out of his mind in five weeks. And Dusty goes, that ought to be easy because Terry Funk is out of his mind. It gets a big pop. And by the end of that meeting, I had my angle. And I also had the approval of WWE to be writing about it. 